What's happening, Polite Society? I hope you had a good week. If you're here for the first time, welcome to my channel. I'm Alan. Today, we're continuing with our series on the women's movement. We are looking at some of the key figures of the second wave. So let's delve in. Perhaps no female activist embodies the fury, angst, and hatred towards men more so than Andrea Dworkin. With her large physical frame, her signature lesbian overalls, and her rambunctious speech, Dworkin was hard to miss. She is revered by many modern egalitarians for being a champion of the oppressed. In her time, Andrea's books were considered groundbreaking and impactful. She has even been referred to as the Malcolm X of the women's movement. Andrea Dworkin was born in 1945 to parents who had Jewish immigrant backgrounds. Her father was a socialist and a school teacher. Dworkin had a rather turbulent relationship with her mother, who wanted her daughter to make herself presentable so she could find a good man and raise obedient children. However, it should be mentioned that Andrea later wrote that her mother was pro-choice, even when prenatal infanticide was illegal. Dworkin is said to have had a rough go. At age nine, she was molested by a stranger. She also claimed to have been abducted by aliens when she was 12. She additionally said that she was abused by New York prison doctors at age 18. Her trauma could help explain the foci of her work. In her 1974 book, Woman Hating, Dworkin argued that adult entertainment content eroticized women's subordination to men and exploited them. Intercourse, which was first published in 1987, is perhaps the book Andrea is most well known for. Scholar Janice Fiamengo has said that the phrase Dworkin most often uses in this title is the F. The F signified the dehumanization that normal intercourse involved. In the public sphere, her argument was simplified to all intercourse is non-consensual. Dworkin denied that this was what she said, and the misrepresentation only served to fuel her already radical persona. In 1983, she gave a speech that is well remembered. At St. Paul, Minnesota, with a gathering that included 500 men, Dworkin called for males to end sexism. She said that they could achieve this by telling their side to have a 24-hour truce in which there were zero non-consensual coercive criminal acts. Andrea provided no exclusions for the pro-egalitarian men who were in attendance. She said that if they were unable to prevent women from being sensually assaulted for at least a day, they could never claim that they believed in equality or cared about women. Dworkin died in 2005. Let's turn to some criticism. First, neither men nor women nor any other created being has the power to eliminate any sin, including the sin and crime of non-consensual coercive intercourse. However, the one true and living God does have that power, and he not only can, but he will eliminate sin forever from this planet in the eschaton. Second, while Dworkin was right to blame male criminals as the victimizers of non-consensual acts, it should be noted that 80% of carnal predators come from single mother households. The subject of the single mom epidemic in the West is one that requires an entire video in itself to cover. But just some brief thoughts here. While adultery, abuse, and abandonment by men, as well as widowhood, can lead to single motherhood, it must be pointed out that there are also quite a large number of bad single moms out there who are vindictive and self-centered. Also, according to one study, over half a million men in prison or jail are fathers. This is astonishing considering the fact that there are many good men out there who are single and childless. Women need to be held accountable for the bad choices they often make in men. Instead, they are being praised as superheroes for being single moms, which is often due to their own poor life decisions. And in relation to coercive acts, I would argue that if we bring the single mom numbers down, we will have fewer sensual predators. Additionally, as I pointed out before, it is a lie that men do not care about women as they should. Men's inability to prevent sensual felony for one day does not prove that males do not believe females have the same dignity, value, and worth as they do. Men work in highly dangerous jobs in order to keep the infrastructure going. Men comprise 85% of law enforcement, about the same percentage of military personnel, and nearly all combat positions in the military. These men work to keep us safe and should be commended for that. In summation, Andrea Dworkin, like the other second wave thinkers we have looked at in this series, promoted an ideology and philosophy that has led to the degradation of the West. In order for us to grow and prosper as a nation, we need good men and good women. 
not female egalitarians and weak males. Under a godly biblical patriarchy, men, women, and children will experience the best possible outcomes. So let's be in prayer for those who are deceiving and being deceived by the teachings of the women's movement. Let's pray that the Spirit of God will work in their hearts so that they will turn to the Lord Jesus Christ as he is freely offered in the gospel. The sources that I use for this upload are available in the video description below. All right, that's a wrap for now, ladies and gents. If you want to share your own thoughts, be sure to do so in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like the content here, you can subscribe by clicking on the icon on the bottom right. Then you can hit the bell for notifications. I upload a new video every Wednesday and every Saturday. Have an awesome week, and for my brothers and sisters in the Lord, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all always. I will see you all in the next video. God's blessings on your week.